I think it's all too often that you think that the researcher or the clinician really knows what patients need and what they want. But actually when you speak to them and you have a conversation with them, it can be completely different. <laughs> and really hearing that from patients is really important. My area of research is really focused around stroke prevention. I'm a registered nurse by background and have worked in acute stroke units for probably around about 10 or 15 years. During my PhD studies, it actually I became an, an ambassador for the Stroke Foundation. And for me as a student, that was really quite helpful because I was engaging with the community around my research. And what I found is that I was used to dealing and caring for patients in a very acute environment. And really, I probably didn't think a lot about what happens to patients once they leave the hospital. So really, getting to know these stroke survivors quite well over the last sort of 10 years has been fantastic. Through developing those relationships with a lot of those consumers, I get to share ideas with them and it's quite unique and very privileged position. And I've really seen the benefit of being able to share ideas with them, but then also use them as a sounding board to gauge the acceptability of different interventions or understand a problem a bit better from their own perspective. As an example, you know, I think there's a lot of hype around digital technologies and apps for patients being really great for education and for self-management and as a way to be connected with patients as well. In some recent work that we've been doing, you know, I've been asking patients about how they would like information delivered to them and I'm really, really surprised, you know, at people's responses saying, I just want to talk to patients like me and know that there's someone going through what I'm going through. And so when you really listen to what patients want and what they find helpful, sometimes that can be completely different <laughs> from what you think. I often talk to people that are actually very frightened of doing consumer engagement. When you explain it to other researchers around this more of a conversation with people about what they would like. I think that's a bit of an easier way to package it and also to approach it. I guess any other advice would just be to think about the planning of consumer engagement and where consumers could be best partnered with across that programme or that project. And I often view this engagement as a continuum from consultation on the one end and involvement. I prefer the other end of the spectrum which is really around authentic engagement, partnership and also shared leadership and, and shared vision and shared goals. Building consumers as ambassadors for your own work can be really, really helpful in that long-term engagement with your findings as well. Some of these trials take sort of three or five years time to complete and then you know you might have a study that follows on from there as well. So I think fostering those relationships is really important as time goes on. You know, the majority of us are funded through donors or through government taxpayer money. So making sure that you're doing research that's really responsive to the needs of the public is really, really fundamental. And so I think, to me, it doesn't just make me feel warm and fuzzy inside, but it makes you really appreciate what you do and why you do it.